So what have we been up to while isolated and practicing social distancing? A lot. I'm Jay and this is the Banks Insider for the week of April 10th, 2020. All right, now that we're in our sterilized studio, in this week's Engineering Unboxed video, Gail opens up his Easter basket to find a new crankshaft damper from Fluid Damper for both of our Duramax projects, the Killing a Duramax engine and the supercharged monster truck engine. Gail explains what's happening with both the stock damper and why you need a new viscous damper if you're gonna add horsepower or run the engine at higher RPMs. This new fluid damper will keep you from breaking your very expensive crankshaft. It's also a masterful piece of engineering and he shows you how it works. Subscribe to Banks' YouTube channel or Facebook feed to get the latest engineering unboxed video every week. In this week's R&D update, we check out the new fuel flow metering assembly that's being installed by Curtis in Dino Cell No. 1 in preparation for running the monster truck supercharged twin turbo Duramax. With its two high flow meters, one measures the flow into the engine while the other measures the fuel flow return out of the engine, it adds another level to assist engineers in precisely tuning the fuel demand because an engineer's power delivery is in constant flux. It's important to know if the fuel system is able to meet the demand requested. Also important is measuring the fuel's quality, condition, and temperature to and from the engine. This sucker's gonna tell us everything and maybe it'll even help us unlock secrets of the universe. The whole Big Bang explosion. Next in I Dash on the Road, we have Dustin Brennan, who's the bank's test pilot for the upcoming Pedal Monster Throttle Sensitivity Control. His ride isn't just another diesel, nope. It's a Chrysler 300 SRT8, proving yet again that Banks is more than just trucks. We absolutely love the product, Dustin said enthusiastically. It's truly changed the way the car drives. There's no more dead pedal, and the amount of adjustability is just fantastic. It makes it feel like a whole new car. And add the fact that it can be adjusted so easily on the fly by way of the iDash is pretty awesome. When my wife gets in the car, it takes all of three seconds to adjust the pedal sensitivity to her liking. She's dialed it in before I've even buckled my seatbelt, he says. Dustin, it looks like your wife's moving in on your 300, so don't get stuck with the minivan. That's, that's not, no bueno. In the dealer spotlight, we meet up with Brian Goodwald, co-owner of Twin Diesel Performance. Opened in 2015, Brian and his twin brother David, yes, that's where the name came from, well, they've worked to make their shop one of the most thriving diesel shops in Central Florida. They both know diesel, they've worked on heavy equipment for years before doing some time in the military. And Brian, thank you very much for your service. These guys go out of their way to prove that honesty and integrity still exist when taking your diesel in for service and repair. And they don't care if you're having a rough time scraping two nickels together, they treat every customer with care. And if you're in the Lakeland, Florida area and you're looking for a shop that'll treat you right, then give Twin Diesel Performance a call because everyone loves twins. Born to be bad. Yes, we are. <laughs> Onward to Fan Focus, where we talked with Dan Benitez, who recently took his supercharged 6.8 liter V10 excursion to Banks for a set of torque tube headers and a monster exhaust. The cool part of his story is that Dan had an opportunity to blindly bid on this rig, which at the time was completely covered and in storage for over 14 years in a warehouse due to being in some kind of litigation. He had no idea what he was bidding on. So this mystery vehicle sat untouched under a cover, like a time capsule, if you will. Dan won the auction for $11,000, and as they uncovered it, he freaked. With only 48,000 miles on the odometer, it was a pretty darn good buy, especially since it has a Kenny Bell supercharger strapped onto it. After some minor maintenance, replacing the shocks and a detail, his auction prize rides well and is almost Flawless. With the new Banks exhaust components freeing up exhaust flow, reducing pumping losses, improving performance, and adding a little mileage, Dan's winning bid is even more of a prize when he mashes the throttle with an added dose of acceleration and a beefy exhaust note to boot. So we jumped in our hot tub time machine to take us back to the bygone year of 1975 where Gail Banks took notice of diesel. See, in 1973, Gail was hired to serve as a consultant and vendor to JPL Caltech for a future engine study that was funded by a $500,000 grant from the Ford Foundation, yes, the Ford Motor Company. And in 1975, the study of future engines was published under the title, Should We Have 
a new engine. This report prompted Gale to take a close look at the attributes of the diesel engine. Being a futurist, he recognized that the efficiency of the existing infrastructure of the oil burner made it a clear winner among some of the other proposed concepts. The top two spots of the recommended engine types were the Brighton and Stirling engines, but both needed five to 10 years to mature. Other engine types reviewed were the UC Auto, SC Auto, Diesel, Brighton, Rankin, Stirling, Electric, and Hybrids. Diesel ranked number four, while electric and hybrids came in seventh and eighth, respectively. So it appears this study basically predicted the next five decades. And dudes, feast your eyes on this brand new bank shirt. Come here, Henry. Check this out. Our first red shirt in a very long time. Do a little pirouette. Let's see the backside. Oh, pause right there. Look at this. Bank's power number one. All right, yeah. so these are available right now in limited supply on bankspower.com. We've got small through 5X. All right. Go back behind the camera, Henry. Thank you. Some of you may be familiar with High Performance Academy. HB Academy offers online tutorials and curriculums for professional tuners and automotive enthusiasts. Native New Zealanders Ben and Andre were deep into electronic fuel injection tuning and established their online school to share their passion and knowledge with other like-minded gearheads. They offer courses in engine building, tuning, wiring, you name it. In addition to their subscription services, they post free informative interviews on their YouTube channel. In their latest YouTube video, host Andre Simon talks to Banks engineering manager Chris Otani about the differences between flash programming and inline tuners. They also touch on the iDash data monster, add-on modules, and the suite of available sensors. It's a lot of info in a bite-sized portion with some nutritional value to boot. If you're interested in learning more about their curriculum, check out hpacademy.com. Stay glued to our Facebook and Instagram feeds and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up on all the latest goings on at Banks. We're still here and we're pumping out performance. Whoa!